Welcome! This video provides an overview of the TEXA provider portal and shows how to create, manage and submit applications and requests. There is one portal per registered provider. The portal supports applications as created by the provider and requests as created by the TEXA case manager. The portal should not replace the discussions that need to happen between the provider and the case manager before the start of an application or when the case manager deems a request is necessary. TEXA will create logins for provider staff as requested by an authorised contact from the provider. All provider staff with access to the portal will have the same rights to edit, create and submit an application or request. Before starting to use the portal, please read the frequently asked questions available at texa.gov.au slash for providers slash provider portal. I'll now describe the key components of the portal. The portal consists of a home page which shows in-progress applications and requests as well as available forms that the provider can use. The portal also consists of the ability to view applications with different statuses and the ability to view requests with different statuses. To view applications with different statuses, click on the application header. This will show an application view screen. You can use these status filters here to sort by different application status. You can also use the filters built into the header row to further filter or sort data. Similarly, to see requests, you click on the request header option and again you have a status filter, awaiting submission all or submitted. You can search or you can sort by inbuilt filters in the header rows. We expect that most providers will spend most of their time on this home screen working on in-progress applications or in-progress requests. Another key component of the portal to share with you is the help option. If you click on the help option you are taken to texa.gov.au slash for providers. From there you can find the frequently asked questions and some useful screenshots. Once you are logged into the portal you will notice that your name appears in the upper right hand side with the dark green arrow allowing you to sign out or change your password and your provider name will appear in the upper left hand side as shown here. There are some important visual clues or symbols to recognise in the portal. The first one is the dark green arrow. That is used consistently through the portal to indicate that you can expand a view as shown here with sign out or change password or allows you to actually click on other options and see other views. So the dark green triangle used there. It's also used here for actually providing filtering options. Another important visual clue is the dot 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 symbol. This is how you open an existing application or request. To open an existing request you click on the record itself and then click on the dot dot dots and you have the option to respond to a request. This allows you to open a request. Or with an existing application that you have already commenced, if you click on the record and then you choose the dot dot dots, you are able to then go in and edit and continue work on an application. This screen shows requests and applications that have already been commenced by this demonstration provider. To start a completely new application, use the options from the left hand side. If you click on the TEXA forms heading, you will see a list of forms that have been assigned to this provider. If you click on the CRICOS forms heading, you will see a list of CRICOS forms that have been assigned to this provider. The forms themselves are the output of the recent streamlining initiative to simplify and standardise our forms. The forms are called beta because we are actually soliciting feedback from providers to make sure that the forms are as usable as possible and after a period of time we will apply that feedback and reissue the forms. These beta forms are fully production ready and are being currently used by providers. To start an application you can click on the application form itself as I am showing now. The next screen you see will be an overview. The overview screen provides a description of the form and some relevant information and links, for example, about fees. If you hit cancel at this time, no application is created. 
if you hit continue, an application is actually created for course accreditation in this example. We are now looking at a fairly standard layout for one of our online forms. You see the name of the form in the upper left hand side and all of the main sections are displayed down the left hand side. So in this case for the course accreditation we have a section on course details, course documentation, course development and approval, staff details. These are the core evidence requirements. If you are requested by your case manager to provide any additional information over and above the core requirements, that information goes into the any other requirements section. A number of our questions simply require a free text answer. What you will notice if you enter text or select a drop down option and then you try and leave that page, you will get an unsaved item alert. In this case, I'm going to say no and I am going to save this information. There are no mandatory sections in any of our forms. There are, however, a few mandatory fields. And for example, I will show those now when trying to add a course. So if I choose add course and I haven't entered the necessary information, I will see that I have to enter that information. I can now save that information. I now have my course added into this application. I can edit those details again or I can remove the record in its entirety. We also seek information based on documents that the provider may already have. So for example, in this question, rationale and projected student numbers, we seek evidence that describes the purpose for or rationale for a course of study. These new online forms have been designed so that providers can reuse documents they already have. In this example, to respond to a request for evidence on rationale and projected student numbers, I have some documents that as a provider I am already working with. I will then drag those documents in and notice I'm dragging them in over the drop here. And those documents are now added in as the evidence against this question 1.2. I can drag in multiple documents and documents of different types. Please check the frequently asked questions for some of the parameters around eligible documents, document naming standards and document size. If I choose to bring another version of the same document in against a question, I will be asked if I want to replace it, yes or no. Once documents are added in against a question in an application, or in fact against a request, those documents automatically get added by the system to the document repository. The document repository contains all of the documents that have been added by anyone using this provider portal for any application or request. You are not able to drag a document directly into the document repository. You will get a warning message if you try and do that. You can only populate the document repository by adding a document against a question in an application or against a request. I can delete documents from a question by choosing the dot 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 option and then choosing the delete option. Providers are not able to delete documents from the document repository at this stage. If you wish anything to be deleted, please contact your case team with the name of the document to be removed. If I wish to assign documents from my document repository to a question in an application or to a request, I select those documents using the tick option here and then I choose the assign all selected option. Those documents are now assigned to this particular question and will be visible to the case manager once I submit this application. As we intend that providers will reuse documents they already have without renaming, or without reformatting, we have provided the provide context box here as a way of allowing providers to tell us which pages or which sections to look at. For example, you might say page 10 of the 
course X rationale document shows blah 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 or section 6 of the governance structure etc. So the idea is that you reuse documents that you already have either by dragging them in or assigning from the document repository and then you use the evidence provide context to tell us where to look. Please note that the provide context only allows 4,000 characters, which is about an A4 page. It doesn't allow formatting. We strongly encourage you to put any more lengthy or formatted context in a separate Word document, drag it in here, and then simply cross-reference it here if your needs are more comprehensive than the basic text formatting allowed. We also allow evidence to be added in another way. We recognise that providers may have information that lives on their website or a YouTube channel. So if your evidence happens to be on an available website, then type those details in here. Obviously with more specific information than I'm showing in this example. And that information will also form part of the response to this question. Please note that responses, that URLs themselves, are not added into the repository given their transitory nature. As you are working through an online form, you may wish to take a snapshot at a point in time to reflect on the form or to share with colleagues. You can do this by using the Create PDF option. Create PDF will create a snapshot of your form as it stands at this point in time with any saved text and any documents and links that you have added. The PDF itself will contain the overview from Texa, the application ID, your provider name, any questions from Texa and any response that you have provided. Once the PDF appears, you can open the PDF and you will then have the provider name, the form name, the form ID, the overview, the details, any information that you have added and any links or documents that you have added as well. Please note you can't edit the PDF to send information back into the online form. The any other requirements is if you are requested by your case manager to provide extra evidence, this is where you put that information. We also have templates for declarations. The idea is that you open the template, save it, print it, sign it, and then drag the completed template in here. We've talked about save. If you save and close, you will actually save the record and you are then able to go back in and open up the record you were just looking at by using edit application. If you open up a new version of the form, a new version will be created which is obviously blank and will not contain any of the work that you have been working on for this particular application. Ready to submit allows you to change the status of your application from awaiting provider completion to ready to submit. It does not in fact submit the application, it's simply a way that some providers may choose to manage the status of applications. You can still however edit an application that's got a status of ready for submission just as you would have been able to edit an application that has a status of awaiting provider completion. To submit an application you need to be on this screen applications with a not submitted status. And to submit an application, you can submit one or more applications together. What you do is tick the applications, then you hit submit all selected. The next screen that you see will be the draft invoice screen. The draft invoice shows you an itemized list of the applications you have submitted and where it relates to course accreditation or renewal of accreditation, the actual items, the courses themselves. In this case we are seeing that we're proposing to submit two applications together and each application has a particular course. We can see the fees that are there and if at this point this is what you want to submit then you hit confirm submission, otherwise hit cancel submission. 
Once you have submitted an application, you cannot edit that application. If you need changes to be made to a submitted application, please contact your case manager. You can, however, view a submitted application and open up the invoice and the PDF at the point of submission as they are assigned to the submitted application. When the application has successfully submitted, the application view is returned. To actually look at your submitted application, click on the submitted status and then you will see the applications that have been submitted with the date of submission submitted by and status. To view a submitted application, click on the application and then select the view application option. The application is displayed in view mode. You will see the documents that you have added, you'll see the links that you have added and you can open up the invoice. And so you can see the invoice that was submitted and you can also open up the PDF that was created at the point of submission. And because we have finished the applications, we've submitted them, they are now no longer appearing on this home page. In terms of requests, a request is created by your case manager. And as mentioned earlier, you will be advised if a request is made prior to actually logging into the portal. So you don't need to worry about logging into the portal every day to see if a request has been made. To action a request, select the request and then select the respond to request option. We have a variety of types of requests, but they all have the same structure. An ID, potentially a due date, a request type, a subject, and a description. A request itself consists of two main sections. It consists of request documentation from TEXA. For example, the letter that your case manager has emailed to you. You can open that request using the dot 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 option. And then a section for you to provide your response. It may be that you want to use the browse option to add in a document. It may be that you want to actually drag in a document from your network as part of your response. The drag and drop and assigning from document repository functionality is common between applications and requests. If I've added something in and I think it's not what I want, I can delete that document. Otherwise, I can actually use the document repository to assign a document from my document repository. So I will select documents, I will select assign, and those documents will now be assigned into this request. As with an application, a provider cannot delete a document from the document repository, but as shown before, can delete a document from the actual request itself. Again, you are not able to drag a document directly into the document repository, it is populated as a result of a document being added to a request. As with applications, there is the ability to add a link. You can make a link part of your actual response. Please note that you must submit your request in order for your case manager to know that you have finished work on that request and passed it back to TEXA for review. And I won't see anything on my homepage now because I have submitted my request and I have submitted my applications. To see the submitted requests, I choose the request header and then I select the submitted option and I can then go in and view the request. At the end of every session, we do suggest that people sign out rather than just close down their session. And there is a 30 minute inactivity timeout. So if you've not done anything for 30 minutes, when you next try and work on the portal, you will get a timeout message. Click on the link and you'll be taken to the sign in page. TEXA is very happy to answer any questions or respond to any queries raised by providers in relation to the provider portal. Please contact your case manager if you have any questions. Thank you for your time.